Now that we have the business layer project defined, we can add the entity classes to that project. Let's start with the customer class. We could delete class one and add our customer class from scratch, or we can simply rename class one. Let's do that. We'll make that our customer class. If we rename Class 1 in Solution Explorer, it will provide an option to automatically rename the class in the code file. So let's do that. So notice it changed the name here in the code file. Next, we need to ensure that the class has public accessibility. So our access modifier here is public. When you create a new class, it defaults with no access modifier. So you'll need to ensure that it is defined to be public. Giving a class public accessibility means that the class is callable from any other project within the solution and by any external component. We want other components to use these entity classes, so we want this class to have public accessibility. Note that each class you define is a type. Just like strings are types and integers are types, your classes are also types. Now let's add properties to the customer class. Earlier in this course, we identified several properties for the customer class. The first property was name, so we could identify a name property here. In most cases, though, when building a class that represents a person, the name is divided into two separate properties, first name and last name and sometimes even a middle name or initial. Let's just define a first and last name. Recall from the last module, a class should encapsulate its data. That means that the actual data is hidden within the class, and access to that data is provided with accessors. In code, the data is hidden by defining a private backing field. This field stores the actual data, and it uses a private access modifier to ensure that no code outside of this class can access it. The data is accessible to other parts of the application through a C-sharp property. A property includes the get and set accessors. A property is often defined with a public access modifier, meaning any code can use it to get or set the data. If you want the property to only be accessed within the current component, meaning our business logic layer, you can use the internal access modifier instead. Internal means that access is limited to code internal to the component in which it is defined. So, in this case, any code within the business layer could access the property, but code in any other component, such as the user interface layer, could not access the property. In this case, we want to allow access to the last name from any component, so we're going to make it public. As its name implies, the get accessor portion of the property is accessed when the code gets or references the property. In this example, the code then just retrieves the value of the backing field and returns it. You can add code in the get accessor to perform any operations prior to returning the value. You can write code to verify that the user can access this data, or code to reformat or convert this data. You can leave off the getter entirely if you want to define a write-only property. The set accessor portion of the property is accessed when the code assigns a value to the property. In this example, the code simply assigns the value to the backing field. You can add code in the set accessor to perform any operations prior to assigning the value. You can write code to validate the value before assigning it. Or you can write code to reformat or convert the data. You can leave off the set entirely to define a read-only property. We'll see examples of how these properties are called and used a little later in this module. To summarize, when defining a property, you need to define a variable to store the value, which is the backing field, 
and you need to define the C-sharp property with a get accessor and or a set accessor. In many cases, however, you'll find that you don't need any code in the getter or setter. When that is the case, you can shortcut the property syntax using something called auto-implemented properties. The syntax for an auto-implemented property looks like this. Notice how much shorter that syntax is than the entire block required for the last name. Behind the scenes, the code is still creating a backing field, so you still have that encapsulation. You just don't have to manage that backing field. That backing field is managed for you, so you get the benefits of encapsulation without the code bloat. But this is only for cases in which you don't need any code in the get or set block. The general rule of thumb, if you don't need any logic within the getter or setter, use an auto-implemented property. Otherwise, use the full property syntax with a backing field. Let's take a moment and talk about snippets. Visual Studio provides a set of snippets, which are shortcuts for typing C-sharp syntax. Let's first make our Solution Explorer a little smaller so we have a little bit more real estate on our screen. Then let's try some snippets. We can use Edit, IntelliSense, Insert Snippet. That gives us a set of categories, and we can pick whichever category that we want, and drill down to pick the snippet that we would like. Alternatively, you can right-click anywhere in the editor, select Insert Snippet, then pick the appropriate category, and so on. Each snippet has a name, which is shown here in the list. So if we want a property, its name is called PROP. So we can select that property. The highlighted areas are called replacements. You can replace the value and press Tab to move to the next replacement. So the next property we need is an email address. That's also a string. So we can type string, tab, tab, email address. Then we can hit Enter to move to the end, Enter again to go to the bottom. Once we know the name of a snippet, we can simply type in that name, PROP, tab, tab, and there we have our snippet. Even though the specification didn't call for it, we know we want a unique identifier for each customer. So let's add a customer ID. It's going to be an integer, so we'll leave that tab over, and then type customer ID. Enter, enter, and then you can go for the next one. So this is a very quick way to build all of the properties for your classes. For our customer ID, we want to allow retrieving the ID, but never setting it. The database is going to set the ID and return it to us. So we could use the prop snippet like we just did, or instead, we can delete that and use prop G. Prop G defines a snippet that has a getter and a private setter. So instead of removing the setter entirely, which would mean that the code in our class couldn't even set it, we could instead use the private access modifier on the set to define that we can set this property, but any code external to this class cannot. And again, we want to call that customer ID. There are snippets available for many tasks you perform. If you have some time, try them out. The original specification called for a name property in the form last name, comma, first name. So let's add a full name property that will return the format requested by the specification. Notice that in this case, there is no backing field because it does not require storage of any data. It's using the backing fields already defined for last name and first name. Also notice that this one has a getter, but no setter. No other code, not even our code in this class, should be able to change this value. Now that we have our first set of logic in our application, let's write our first automated code test.